In our previous activity, you guys used this simulation to investigate and explore the behavior and characteristics of waves, or disturbances that move through a material. Remember, to create a wave or a moving disturbance, which is moving energy, all you have to do is disturb a material, and that disturbance will move away through the material at, at a certain speed. What that disturbance looks like, or that moving wave looks like, depends on how you disturb the material like I'm demonstrating right here. So instead of looking at individual pulses or individual traveling waves, we're gonna look at what happens when we disturb the material like in a regular repeated or periodic way. So I could just shake this thing back and forth, back and forth from its equilibrium position, which is what that orange dashed line represents. And you can see that if I do that, it creates something that kind of looks like a sine wave. Well, I can't shake this thing very well in the same way. And so there's an option in this simulation. You might have found this out before. If you click on oscillate, it basically gives us something that's going to disturb the material repeatedly over and over and over again in the same way. So it's disturbing the material up from equilibrium and then down from equilibrium. I'm going to click on slow motion so it's a little bit easier for us to see and talk about. So this is just disturbing one end of the material, in this case a string or like let's say a slinky. It's moving it positively from equilibrium, negatively from equilibrium, and just kind of back and forth like this. We call this a periodic disturbance because it's disturbing the material in a periodic way. In physics, periodic motion is the motion of something that's moving in a regular and repeated way. So with the simulation, it gives us a couple different options to change how, change how this thing is disturbing the material periodically. We can change the amplitude, give it a small amplitude. So it's shaking back and forth, but not being displaced very far from the equilibrium, or we can give it a large amplitude. And we can change something called frequency. And we're gonna come back to what, what frequency is, but um, if I move the slider to the left, like what's being changed about how this is disturbing the material? I'm gonna move it to the right. It's kind of the speed of how it's disturbing things. And so it's displacing things at a given amplitude um, above and below equilibrium, but this frequency slider kind of affects how much time it takes to disturb the material once or go through one full cycle of disturbance. So I just adjusted this so it's oscillating back and forth with an amplitude of one centimeter and I move kind of the speed, the frequency slider to a point where we can see the, weight, the periodic wave that gets created. So let me pause this, kind of take a snapshot in time and ask the question, what is it, what are things that we can measure about this periodic wave? Well, we have a couple different tools for measuring. We've got rulers uh, and we have a timer. So what could we measure with a ruler? about this periodic wave. Well, one thing we've already talked about in a previous activity was the maximum displacement from equilibrium. We, we call that the amplitude. And so we can measure that uh, from this high peak down to the equilibrium. This is uh, two centimeters or three centimeters. So like it says here, we have an amplitude of one centimeter. Um, or we could measure from the equilibrium down to the bottom or that's called the trough of a periodic wave, that's also one centimeter. And so the amplitude, the maximum displacement from equilibrium is one centimeter. Well, what can we measure horizontally about this periodic wave? Well, we can measure from peak to peak, or we call that a crest to a crest, the maximum positive displacement. So if we go from the maximum positive displacement, so one crest to another crest, it looks like that the horizontal measurement is about, let's see here, uh, 2.5 centimeters. Well, what if we go from trough to trough, from the maximum negative displacement to another spot with the maximum negative displacement from equilibrium? We can see that if we put the zero here, it looks like that's also about 2.5 centimeters. So we actually have a special name for that when we measure a periodic wave from crest to crest or from trough to trough, we call that the wavelength. And we use the symbol, the Greek symbol lambda, lambda to represent that wavelength. 
So I'm going to take the rulers away and turn the simulation back on and so we can see what's happening in real time. I'm going to slow this thing down. See our periodic wave moving away to the right. So I guess what are some, what's something that we can measure using a stopwatch? Well, I suppose there's lots of different things that we could, but I'm going to let uh, advance this frame by frame until we get to the point where the thing doing the disturbing on the left-hand side making our periodic wave is all the way has po maximum positive displacement from equilibrium. And I'm going to measure how much time it takes for this thing to, go, to basically go through one full cycle of its periodic disturbance. So from maximum positive displacement to maximum positive displacement. So with our simulation paused, I can start the stopwatch and that stopwatch won't do anything until I actually hit play. So let me hit play. I'm going to stop it once this point go, goes through a full cycle and reaches the same spot. Okay, so it looks like it took about 0.67 seconds for this thing doing the disturbing to go through one complete cycle. We call that the period of oscillation or the period of a periodic wave. The amount of time for a periodic wave to complete one full cycle. Well, this was the period of the thing doing the disturbing. What would be the period of, let's say, this point in the material to go from maximum positive displacement to maximum positive displacement? Let's restart our timer and find out. Will it play? So if we watch that green part of the material, get it all the way to the top, it looks like, again, it took about 0.66 or 0.67 seconds for this part of the material to go from maximum positive displacement all the way back to maximum positive displacement again. So that is defined as the period. So I just went back to the normal speed, not seeing the simulation in slow motion. And I want to adjust things just a little bit and try measuring the period again and talking about how that relates to something we call the frequency. So I'm going to move the slider to the right a little bit. And you can see that now the, the, the thing disturbing the material is shaking back and forth kind of faster. Uh, it's taking less time to go through one complete cycle. The period of oscillation should be less. So I'm going to go back to slow motion. I'm going to pause this, uh, get this at the top. So this is at positive maximum displacement. Start our stopwatch and find out what's the period of oscillation here. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and hit play and advance this all the way up to the top and we can see if we look at our stopwatch it took about a half of a second for this to go from positive maximum displacement all the way down and back to positive maximum displacement so the period of oscillation is about 0.5 seconds. Well, let's look at the slider which we called frequency. The frequency is 2. So what is it about this periodic wave? I'm going to go back to our our normal speed and let this thing roll. If it takes about a half of a second for any part of the material to go through one complete cycle of oscillation or the disturber to do that, um, what is measured, like what is two about this? Well, if you think about it, if it takes a half a second for one complete cycle, that means in a full second you could go through two cycles. That's what frequency measures. Frequency is measured in something called uh, Hertz, or HZ for short, and Hertz is the num is number of cycles per second. So to review, here's all the different things we can measure about periodic waves. We can measure the wavelength of a periodic wave. Remember, we use the sim the Greek symbol called lambda, known as wavelength. We can measure the amplitude of the wave either from the equilibrium position to the top point of the crest or the equilibrium position to the maximum negative displacement, which we call a trough. We use an A to represent that. We can measure the period, and the period we use a capital T to represent. That's our variable. And the definition of a period is the time to complete one full cycle or, uh, or oscillation. The units are seconds for each cycle. 
We also define the frequency, and we use a lowercase f as the variable for frequency. We define that as the number of cycles in one second. The periodic wave we just measured was two hertz, or two cycles for each second. And the period was a, took a half of a second for one cycle. For frequency, the units are cycles for each second, or hertz. And just look at the units here for a minute. Period has units of seconds for, divided by one cycle, and frequency has units of cycles divided by one second. The units are just reciprocals of one another. It turns out that frequency and period are related with this equation. That frequency is just the inverse of the period, or uh, the period is the inverse of the frequency. So this introduces the idea of periodic waves um, and what can be measured. Next, we're going to look at a lab which looks at the relationship between some of these measured variables about a periodic wave.